Hello and welcome to the crypto channel where I try to bring you the news without the hype. Apologies for the time I've been away recently. I'm glad to be back in the crypto space. Uh, wishing you all a happy Easter for those who celebrate Easter. I personally have just demolished a chocolate Smarties Easter egg. I ate the entire thing including the Smarties and I'm feeling a little bit chocolated out. Okay we're going to go straight into it. Ash Crypto. Bitcoin price update. Bitcoin is trading just below its new all-time high of 74k. A similar thing happened in 2020 when Bitcoin tried breaking the previous all-time high a few times. Once it broke the all-time, it pumped 200% in just three months. I expect a similar thing here, as currently the accumulation phase is going on with Bitcoin, and soon it will break the 74k mark and pump towards 100k. So, food for thought, Ash Crypto uh, clearly thinks Bitcoin is going to go up considerably but a lot of people uh, have the opposite sentiment okay xrp crypto wolf the insiders would have pumped the price of xrp by now if there was actually a settlement coming soon it would be i included this because it would be great to see a settlement and when it comes and for this headache of the lawsuit to be uh, well and truly over for the xrp community but i think the sec will hold on uh, as long as they possibly can okay i thought this was interesting Dear Pir Pirian DC, I've never held back with my criticism. This is from Mr. Hooper. But wow, finally I had stopped expecting this and I, I admit I was wrong about you. Thank you so much for this and for now recognising the absolute necessity of investigating Hinman. So this is in regards to the Ethereum free pass. Let us play the video. Yeah, well, I appreciate the conversations, you know, we've had about ETHgate and I've, you have know, had the opportunity to learn a lot from you. And I appreciate you taking the time to share with me, you know, your work and your, your research uh, on this. You know, I would say from my perspective, the thing that's most concerning that's really under scrutiny right now is was there any type of uh, conflict of interest between William Henman and, and someone in the private sector? You know, was there compensation for the speech that he gave? Um, that is extremely uh, concerning to me. And you know, the public policy process um, needs to be protected. Uh, it needs to be protected from bribery. It needs to be protected from corruption. And so to uh, the extent that there is anything inappropriate there, I do think it should be investigated. Um, Okay, so this is um, a show, an interview with Digital Perspectives. So Brad Kimes, if you want to watch the full video, it's three minutes and five. Um, yeah, go and visit Digital Perspectives channel. But it's kind of, it's good that this conversation is coming out more and more. There was a fantastic show I was watching the other day where they were talking about in so many parts of government... Uh, etc so many kind of dodgy things have happened but we're living in kind of a clown world where the world is upside down at the moment and so many things that shouldn't be happening are happening that things like this things like the bill henman speech you know will anything come out of it i think i think possibly because the xrp community is so large and they're not going to let this one go they just keep putting up videos and more videos and more videos of this and we've seen people from the German stock exchange talking about, you know, the Ethereum, initial coin offerings, etc. All of this stuff does need to be investigated in order for us to move forward with Ethereum. So, you know, food for thought. Okay, Elon Musk at 5,000 tons. Starship is the largest flying object ever made. Thrust is more than double the Saturn V moon rocket. It is the first spaceship design capable of making life multiplanetary. Goal of the next mission is to make it through the meteorically extreme heat of re-entry. It's amazing what Elon Musk uh, does with just one life. And, you know, he didn't come from massive wealth and yet he has achieved so much and continues to achieve so much. Uh, I think it's incredible. Okay, JXRP. Will Ripple pay $2 billion in fines to the SEC? What do you think? Me personally, I don't think they're going to pay anywhere near $2 billion, but I think the SEC is going to say, we want $2 billion, and Ripple is going to go, we're not going to pay you $2 billion, and then we get to see them argue it out and prolong the court case. Okay. Yeah, we're not going to play that video. I have recorded this video already once, and so I was a bit annoyed it didn't record properly. So I'm going to try and get through it relatively quickly for now. Okay, we will play it. Pump Bitcoin, suppress gold and tell the researcher. What before it, watch before it's censored. Let us listen to this video. And this to me is the most important thing uh, to take away from 
I think what's going on with the BRICS, what's going on with the new currency, what's going on with their accumulation of gold, because it will, just like Zoltan Pozar said, we're in, entering into a system of commodities and transparency. So, but here's what they had to say. And, and this is why I've been saying for the last two years that you will see the Western system, the COMEX and the LBMA exposed for what it is. It is a scam, if you will, where, where the market, where the, the futures market is controlling the price of the underlying commodity and it's not right. So let price formation with this new currency should get rid of the Western exchanges of commodities. Here enters the the um, Moscow exchange for metals. Here enters the Shanghai gold exchange. Here enters the exchange in Dubai, where these are the, the I believe, will be the epicenters for commodity pricing. Now, it's also fair to note two other things. One, the Chinese bought the LME, the London Metal Exchange, about three, four years ago. And the LME is largely a base metal exchange. They do some precious metals, but mostly copper, zinc, lead, you know, steel, aluminum, all of that kind of stuff. And they just said they're going to start warehousing in China the metals that are traded on the LME. So it's precious metals, it's base metals, and they just came out the other day and said they are going to issue now the BRICS Grain Exchange because all of the prices are primarily determined by the Chicago Commodity Exchange. So what they are doing, and think of mass adoption, think of doing things methodically, think of doing things the right way before you pull the trigger, little by little by little, then bang, all at once. Okay, I've seen so many people talking about this, but in the mainstream, it never really seems to get covered. That you know, uh, it seems like the the kind of the Western markets they suppress and manipulate the price of precious metals, but those days are ending. And if you know, there's some crazy uh, gold valuations out there and silver valuations. But many, I think most people seem to agree, financial expert experts, that when people stop relying so much on what the West say, this the precious metals the commodities are worth and we start looking at other countries like the BRICS nations you will see a revaluation of gold and some people think that gold could literally go to kind of fifteen thousand dollars per ounce i'm just giving you the information i'm not telling you what to think but you know as they said if something like that happened there would be a lot of very unhappy people because they didn't invest in gold and there would be a lot of very very happy people and what you need to ask yourself is why are central banks across the world accumulating more and more gold all the time that is all i'll say about that bitcoin apex so-called experts according to the public broadcaster in germany claim that the upcoming bitcoin halving will instantly halve the price of bitcoin and thus soon provide a more favorable entry opportunity for speculators i included this because it's just an opinion that kind of goes against what ash crypto was saying at the beginning of this video he thinks bitcoin's going to go up by 200 percent. this person thinks it's going to go down by 50 percent and when you kind of research this space as heavily as I do, you will basically realize that nobody knows what they're talking about. They're all speculating and they're going by history and they're looking at the charts. And, you know, when you hit the resistance lines, it's either going to go one way or it's going to go the other way. Good morning, crypto. XRP passed Ethereum in 2017. The past seven years witnessed a dramatic shift in the crypto landscape. This screenshot showcases the magnitude of that evolution. Bitcoin ruled the market. And he basically just goes on to say that XRP was number two. It had flipped Ethereum. Do you think XRP could flip Ethereum? I think there is a world where it could flip Ethereum again. You know, Ethereum has a big lead over XRP now. And, you know, people are getting very frustrated. Ethereum's going up massively and XRP is not. But yeah, I think, I think the technology behind XRP is still absolutely incredible, which is why my largest holding is, holding is in XRP. Um, you know, I think things like Dogecoin are going to go very well. So I always think it's wise to maybe own a little bit of Dogecoin. Alex Hormozzi, uh, he's known as the $100 million man. I include uh, a lot of what he says because he does give pearls of wisdom. He goes on to say, you're not making as much money as you want because you're not as good as you think you are. This is voiced by many wealth creators around the world where they kind of basically say, it's not that you're not intelligent enough, it's just there's information you don't know that you're missing, which is why you just need to you need to read, you need to educate yourself, you need to constantly kind of, yeah, educate yourself to what's going on, which is why I do this channel. It forces me, myself, to educate uh, the, uh, on the financial markets and to better understand them for myself and for my family. Okay, this is a great video. Um, okay. You know, Google's original motto was don't be evil. I think you could debate whether they've kept to that motto. I don't think they have. 
I like to say blockchains, instead of don't be evil, it's can't be evil. You bake into the code what the rules are, okay? And so with Ethereum, you can build a social network, you can build Uniswap, you can build whatever, you can build a system, and it's baked into the code, it's open source code, what the rules are, and if you build it, by the way, you can build bad blockchains, you can build good ones. If you build it right, um, you, you build it in such a way that those rules cannot change or can't change without a majority of the community or some other kind of, some kind of checks and balances. Um, and so, I mean, that, so that, that's sort of the core novel feature of blockchains is that you can make long-term commitments like that. And that means that users and software developers and creative people, people that you know, build on top of these systems, um, can rely on those assurances, right? They can rely on those assurances and they can build a business, they can you know, trust it. Um, and so, look, that can be, you know, they're, they're good, just like anything in the world, like people can do this correctly or incorrectly, but done correctly, um, a blockchain system can make long-term commitments in a way that, uh, that these corporate systems can't. One thing, one thing I might mention is um, I argue that in the book that all of these companies, uh, these internet companies, have followed a predictable pattern, which is they start off, like you think about an early Facebook or something, it's trying to get users, it's trying to get media companies, it's trying to get content, and they go out and they solicit that, and they're really friendly, and they have open APIs. Um, and then over time, um, you know, as they grow, you know, of course, so they start off, every technology falls an S-curve, it's kind of starting off, and then it, hopefully it hits the kind of growth period. And then at some point, they kind of level off because they saturate the world. There's only so many people. And when they, when they get to that point, what we've seen over and over again is they suddenly change their approach to the people that use that network, right? So ask media companies. It's like... Okay, I think it's one of the best worded videos I've seen in a long time. This is why I think blockchain technology, the space of blockchain and crypto is going to change the world and it's not going to go away because it's the first time in history that humankind has ever been able to create something that... There is a set of rules kind of put into the blockchain that cannot be changed or if it's going to be changed, uh, you need to vote on it. So whoever creates the blockchain, when they put this kind of idea out to people to invest in, I mean, Bitcoin is a perfect example. You know what you're getting into with Bitcoin. The rules are not going to change. Whereas a lot of these companies like Google, like Facebook, when they started, just like he says, they were all really nice and they were all sweet and, hey, come and use our platform. And then when they've got kind of total power, global power, and they're absolutely huge, they all of a sudden start being a little less friendly and start acting like, kind of like mini dictators where note this is acceptable and this is not acceptable on our platform etc etc whereas blockchain it kind of gives you a a guarantee that this is how things are going to work and you know even the creators cannot change it it's just it's there it's fixed and it's a fantastic system and we've never had this which is why so many people love uh bitcoin because they said it's the first time in the world we've actually ever had a place where you can store your wealth you can store yeah, store your wealth without anyone coming and taking it from you. So in the past, if you had property, whatever, I mean, the government could come and take your property. It's happened many times throughout history. If you have gold, the government can come along and take your physical gold. They can seize it. They've done it many times in history. But with Bitcoin, they literally can't take it because all the, all of the keys are in your head. Um, so they can't take it by force. They can try and strong arm you and kind of try and make your hand it over. But before they could just walk in and take it with armed people, but now they can't. For the first time in history, we've got this kind of decentralized way of doing stuff, which is why I don't think this is going to go away because it's so appealable to people in so many different directions of this space. And then you think of all the money that's coming in with tokenization and things like this. This space is just going to keep growing and keep growing. Most of the many cryptos, I think, will probably die off, but many cryptos are going to make a dent in the universe for a for a, a better statement i think this space there's no space that i would rather be uh investing at this moment in time i think it's just going to keep better i uh, keep growing i think it's going to get excellent and that brings me on nicely to the next one which is from an elon musk parody account where they said would you buy a hundred percent private phone your data is owned entirely by you nobody else powered by starlink of course your thoughts I'd love to buy a 100% private phone, and I know that you can. I follow a lot of tech genius guys who show you how to make a 100% private phone. However, most people don't have that tech knowledge, and it would be really cool to literally just go to a shop and go, yeah, I have the 100% private phone, please, and they hand it over to you. I think there is more and more people around the world 
voicing these kind of opinions just like he was saying in the in the video where he doesn't want you don't want these big behemoth companies to have power over you to have control over you to have control over your information and control over what you can and can't say on that platform or how you can interact on that platform we saw with paypal that they actually got rid of some people using paypal because paypal didn't agree with things they were saying whereas the blockchain doesn't care what you say it doesn't care who you are it doesn't care how rich you are or how poor you are the rules are fair to everybody across the board and that's why this space is so amazing and i love being in this space i think that's pretty much it the last thing i will leave leave you with is mr huber says xrp is up over six percent within within a single year it has outperformed every saving account of every bank in the world and yet you people are still crying about it yeah i thought that was uh <laughs> food for thought I mean, he's trying to trying to make people feel better, but people are obviously looking at things like Bitcoin and Dogecoin and Ethereum going, well, if I had invested in them, I'd be doing a lot better off. So yeah, I'm annoyed. But yeah, me personally, I'm very happy with this space. I'm I'm kind of buzzing with some of the uh, some of the the things that have worked out well for me over the last couple of years in this space. And you know, I think if you have a, a good solid portfolio of coins then you'll probably do well. Me personally, I always think Doge is a bit of a cool coin and I talk about Doge every now and then because so many uh, crypto communities are very tribal against one another, like the Bitcoiners don't like the XRP and the Ethereum and uh, everyone's fighting on Twitter. But as soon as Doge pops up and Doge starts pumping, nobody's angry at Doge. Doge just kind of slides through and everyone's just kind of silently cheering for the underdog Doge to go up. And yeah, I think Doge has something quite quite special about doge um yeah just my humble thoughts again on this channel i try to tell you not what to think but try and give you information so that you have the information to make up your own decision i hope you like this video if you like this video please hit the like button it really does help push this video out to other people if you are new to the channel then please subscribe and as always this is just a fun it is not financial advice thank you for listening